two roads diverged in a wood. And I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. I grew up in Salt Lake City in the Mormon church. I went to church every Sunday, studied the scriptures, sang hymns, went to young women's on Wednesday nights. The church was central to my upbringing in my childhood, and I'm not a member of the church anymore. And on the surface, that might seem like a whole lot of wasted time and energy, but my upbringing in the church shaped some parts of my personality that have become foundational and essential to the work that I'm doing now. One of those is a deep and abiding love for and dedication to children. The other is a stubborn and persistent belief in the power of unconditional love. So I finished high school. I started college at Brigham Young University. I went on a mission for the church. I came home, got married, moved across the country so my husband could do his PhD. And we decided that we wanted to start a family. Not long after that, I found myself in a hospital bed with a very sweet doctor holding my hand and telling me that I was not going to be able to get pregnant. I was not going to be able to have children in the way that I had planned to for most of my life. About a week later, I was sitting on the front row in church, as I did every week, trying to process this new information. And it happened to be Baby Blessing Sunday, because that's just what life does to you. <laughs> so I'm sitting there on the front row and listening to these women get up and express their gratitude and love for their new babies, and I caught myself having horrible thoughts about these women and their families. Jealousy, resentment, anger, how dare she? And luckily I caught myself mid-thought. And it was as if there were two clear paths right in front of me. And the one I was heading down at that very moment was full of separation and anger and resentment. Separation from women who had children. Disconnection from pregnant women. And even children. My own nieces and nephews, my sisters-in-law, I did not want to go down that road. The other road was unknown to me. But I knew the first step. It was a question of resistance or acceptance. So I sat on the front row of that church and I let the tears roll down my face and accepted now the unknowns that were going to come up in my life. And how could I have known that down that unplanned for pathway was a beautiful little baby boy who would become the love of my life. And even now, so many years later, when I look at his face, sometimes I see his birth mother's face, her eyes, her mouth. It's one of the most cherished faces I have ever seen. And one of the most cherished moments of my life was being able to put my arms around her and say in her ear, thank you. Because what else do you say to such a gift? That experience, and she taught me things about unconditional love and selflessness that I don't think I could have learned any other way. 
Less than a year after my son came into my life, I found myself at another major divergence in my life's path. I have a crystal clear memory of sitting at a stoplight with my baby asleep in the back of the car and agonizing over whether I was going to turn left toward home and husband and church and a life that I knew or whether I was going to turn right toward the woman with whom I was beginning to fall deeply in love. I turned right, which is why I'm here on this stage today. And it's also why, after many twists and turns and trials, both literal and figurative, and lots of support from so many wonderful people, because none of us travels any path alone. I landed at a wonderful little charter school run by community members and dedicated to the holistic education of children, dedicated to raising up intrinsically motivated lifelong learners. I was the first school counselor to be hired there. And I walked into the principal's office on my first day, and I said, what do you want me to do? And she said, and I am not kidding, this is a true story, she said, whatever you want. So by that point in my life, I had learned the incredible value of preparing children to navigate life, the unexpectedness of it, the hardships, the trials. So I set out to create a program that would help them do just that. It has been an incredibly rich journey. We laugh together, we cry together, we dance, we watch movies, we read stories, we discuss things, we heal, we share. And there's there are far too many experiences to tell you about here today, but I want to tell you about one of my very favorite moments. I was walking in from my car pickup duty one day, at the end of the day, and I looked up and I saw this. And I walked up to the other teacher who was on duty and I said, what is he doing? And she said, I don't know, he did this yesterday. <laughs> Because if you're going to meditate, why not do it with a lunchbox on your head? It's far more interesting. It's so wonderful to see these children take the things that they learn and implement them in the most innovative and creative ways, and they always do. My friends, we find ourselves at a crossroads at a divergence in our pathway, in the pathway of humankind. And we are going to have to make a choice. Are we going to keep traveling the road that we've been traveling? We know where that road is going to lead. We see it on the news every day. Are we going to keep doing things the same way we've been doing them? Or are we going to step onto that road less traveled, or that road never traveled? And I don't know everything about what that would look like. So I want to tell you the pieces that I do know. One is that if we are going to change the story of our culture, of our human culture, we must do better by our children, especially in our educational systems. Our children need less noise and more silence and quiet. We, you saw that. They're crying out for it. They need fewer standardized tests and evaluations and more playtime and social time. Less screen time. And not just for them, 
for the adults around them. Less screen time and more connecting time. Fewer drugs and more mindfulness. Here's the side piece to this. If we are going to do better by our children, we must first do better by ourselves. We are the instruments who serve them, and we cannot give to them what we do not have. So no more self-judgment and self-deprecation. No more trying to cut out pieces of our personalities and our pasts. We must love ourselves so that we can love them. For my part, I am going to continue to work, and not tirelessly, I get very tired. <laughs> but I'm going to continue to work to shift the systems that serve our children. I invite you today, my friends, my human family, to take my hand and step onto that unknown pathway with me. Together, we have everything that we need to change our story. Thank you.